chances are that the reason you're watching this video is because you want to start your own business. Maybe you've had an idea for a while now, but you've never really fully committed and taken the leap. Maybe you've actually started one or two projects, but you find that you always lose motivation and just give up. Or maybe you've actually gone to market, but you're finding that people aren't really buying into your products. Well, if so, then this video is for you. We're gonna dump into a segment now from a seminar I gave at Loughborough University, where I shared the three guiding principles that helped me during the first three to six months of establishing my very first business. Enjoy. Now that you know the story, we'll go into the mindsets and principles. And um, these are just three principles or mindsets that I think you should have, especially in the early stages of starting a business. Um, and the number one, is kind of like an obvious one, but the number one mindset and print mindset you should have when it's, you're thinking about starting a business is to just start, like to literally just start and get going. I feel like the reason why people don't take action is because they, they, they almost need to lower the criteria of they, what, what is acceptable for to be a good business idea. Because again, with my story, our initial business was rubbish and it didn't work and it, it, we lost the money but it allowed us to get to this stage where we were able to raise half a million. Each time we've pivoted, even though the previous model doesn't quite make it, we see our revenues grow and grow and grow. So it's almost like it was a completed journey that we needed to take in order to get to the next step. So there's a term called your reticular activation system or your RAS. And what it essentially is, is it's like your selective focus. Um, it's the idea that when you have a problem in front of you and you are struggling with it, then you're able to absorb information and learn and find a solution for it at a much faster rate than otherwise. So for example, it's a bit like, say you are studying a, a Spanish exam and you uh, had an exam like tomorrow and you're walking down the road and you saw like some Spanish words on a the bus, then you, you, you'll see that and be like, oh, that's that word I know, right? But if you're like, oh, I, um, uh, I, I want to learn Spanish just for fun and I never plan on going to any Spanish speaking country and I'm not learning it, then you'll be a much, much more passive experience and you won't learn it as quickly. So um, you should really use your, um, this idea of your RAS to your benefit. The moment you have a problem, you're going to look for as many ways as you can to solve that much quicker. You, you're sure you'll probably fail quicker, but you will also um, f uh, succeed quicker in the long run. Um, so. So yeah, so it, it, there's also going to be a lot of internal resistance, right, to starting. And I always think that you should use that internal resistance as a compass to what you should do next, right? There's a really good book on this as well called The War of Art, and I'd highly recommend reading it to, to, um, to get, like, if, if you have any problems with procrastination or just starting, then read that book. All right, so the second principle, the second mindset is once you kind of know, like, all right, you've got over the, the whole idea of starting and you don't have much resistance anymore, um, what do you actually do? What do you actually, like, go and start? What's the business that you do, right? And a lot of people kind of say, there's a very mainstream term, of just, just do what you love and just follow your passion, right? Um, well, one of my favorite quotes is from this book called So Good They Can't Ignore You from a guy called Cal Newport. And the headline, the chapter two literally says, don't follow your passion. He says, don't follow your passion, but rather focus on the skills instead, because it's only when you're able to do something at a very high level that you're, it then becomes a passion or you then become very interested in it. Um, so for example, it might be say um, you are doing, say you're a teacher and you're teaching people um, some sort of subject, right? You can either teach people, or teach 30 people in one class and you know have some enjoyment out of that, or you can be on like the cutting edge of um, cognitive research or artificial intelligence where you're helping to build some technology which helps you to um, teach people at a larger scale and at a very efficient way. If you focus on your skills as well, you're able to then demand more rights. So for example, if you wanna have like that cool job where you work three days a week and, and can work from home, it's a very valuable, it's a very like rare job, right? So to have that luxury. But if you are literally the best person in your organization, and then you said, hey, I'm gonna leave unless I get two days off, then that organization is almost gonna say, uh, okay, we'll double your pay and you can take two days off because you're so good for us, right? So you, the, the idea is to be so good they can't ignore you and become so good at something that you're able to um, have this sort of job or start the sort of business that you want to, right? Um, also, just on that point, you also wanna focus on your unfair advantages. So rather than say, trying to start, um, 
a basketball business, even though which requires some sort of I don't know some phys physique advantage, right? And if you're like short like me, then you probably won't, don't want to do that, right? Um, but if it's in your interest and you're actually it kind of works for you, then it can be uh, good. So, for example, in my case, I run a millennial marketing company, right? And if someone like a 45 year old is like, hey guys, this is how I think you should uh, advertise on Snapchat, he, and he doesn't even have Snapchat, then I'm at a natural advantage to him than that, right? So look for your unfair advantages and focus on that. Cool, so the third thing I would say is this idea that you want to solve a fundamental problem rather than build a nicer have, right? So you always wanna be thinking, is what I'm doing right now a burning problem which people are actually need and be honest with yourself or is it just like a nice to have so for example initially when I was helping artists to um, monetize their audience or engage with their audience through through these experiences and rewards that's really just I mean meh they can engage with their audiences through their own social media right it wasn't really a burning problem but millennial advertising is a fundamental problem which brands that were having and they they were ha they're having this problem with all the eyeballs which used to be on say Nickelodeon on Sky Digital they weren't on TV anymore and they were going online and they were also going through influencers so how can you use the influencers to your best advantage to to then uh, get in front of those those people right so and especially how can you do that on Snapchat it's very hard there aren't many platforms out there and we believe again we are one of the number one ways to do that so so focus on building a fundamental to solving a fundamental problem.